um, I'd like to continue with our program. I want to introduce the president of the 70th session of the UN General Assembly now, His Excellency Mr. Morgans Likatoft, who can help us understand, as we just heard here, the historical importance of the SDGs and what he sees as the main opportunities for companies to engage with the UN on implementing this for the future. So please join us on stage. Yes, uh, good morning, I think it still is to you, ladies and gentlemen. I am very honored to have the opportunity to join you uh, to discuss this universal revolutionary agenda of 2030, and in particular, the role of the private sector to support the implementation of that great agenda. As I announced it earlier this month, uh, the implementation will be uh, one of the key priorities of my presidency, of course. And uh, to, early, to have early progress in that process, we must, first of all, communicate these goals to the entire world, to old and young people in developed and developing countries alike, and, as it was just discussed in the panel, to business com communities each and everywhere uh, uh, around the globe, and engage all the actors now. Second, we must all examine what we can do to align with this new agenda. In this regard, global compact leadership and commitment to mainstreaming corporate responsibility principles in, in uh, companies' decision-making process is already a good start. And from human rights and labor standards to anti-corruption initiatives uh, and sustainable patterns of production and consumption, the SDGs provide an inclusive and integrated agenda for all actors to bring about better governance uh, to, by all actors and to break down silos and short-termism which undermine our efforts. Third, we must mobilize a much larger and more varied set of financial resources than was relied on for the meeting of the MDGs. Of course, national governments will continue to have a primary responsibility for financing and managing their own development, but however critical domestic resources mo mobilization will be, will not be enough. Strengthen the international cooperation, north-south, south-south triangular will be required also, including uh, cooperation to ensure that large companies, as well as wealthy individuals, pay their taxes where they earn their money, and that we help each other in each and every country to build institutions that can manage the fight against corruption and tax evasion, which is, uh, by the way, an interconnected process also. Uh, and it means that uh, also rich countries will still have to live up to their commitments to provide uh, the official uh, development assistance, particularly uh, in order to make it possible at all for least developed countries to, to live up to the sustainable development goals. But in addition, however, the private sector will be required to play a much more prominent role. I think the majority of resources needed for this great project will have to come from private sources. Thankfully, the process is already in place. We have many examples of initiatives involving private finance investors philanthropists and the business sector in partnership at all levels with governments and international organizations, UN entities and NGOs. But at the same time, we are far away from reaching the scale required, the trillions of dollars required in the next uh, 15 years uh, to make a decisive impact. To help in this regard, we need 
And that is very, very important in my view. We need in each and every country a stable regulatory framework and taxation framework that encourages the sustainable development and makes it obvious that green investment is the best investment, not only for the common good, not only for the long-term perspective, but also for private investors here and now. Ladies and gentlemen, in, in many regards, the year ahead will go a long way to determine whether the uh, 2030 agenda becomes a vehicle for truly transformative change or yet another missed opportunity. And I think we, we all have to keep perfectly clear in our minds that this is not only to promote a good development, it is to avoid a catastrophic development where environmental catastrophes and climate change will soak up all the resources we actually needed for this development of prosperity, stability in this world. So we have to maintain momentum. We have to act, and we have to act now. Uh, and to maintain uh, this momentum, we will try to contribute in, in my presidency here, also to convene a high-level thematic debate next April aimed at demonstrating where implementation is happening, how partners can, can and are working together, and how we can keep the ball rolling and increase the momentum. I look forward to your participation, to encourage, and, and I would encourage you to consider what progress you will be able to report next April. Uh, and I hope that at that occasion, as in many others during the coming year, we can bring together the most forceful voices for this agenda, both from governments, local governments, cities, business community, and civil society, because only in that way we will be able to fulfill these big goals. The task ahead is tremendous, but two are the opportunities for action and for transformation. Your commitment, your energy, your engagement will be crucial. I thank you for the opportunity to address you.